Ready? <laughs> um, I'm Susan Lenz, and I'm working with Sandra Larson on the evaluation of the Utmost Grant, which um, is all about Sage ed Education Days and the use of Sage in the classroom. And so far, um, in the last year, we've been concentrating on the test sites and doing interviews and collecting uh, post-course survey data and anecdotal data about how well SAGE uh, is being used in the classroom. And in particular, I wanted to let you all know about the um, SALGEM SAGE course evaluation form that uh, we'll be using extensively with anybody who's using SAGE in their math classes uh, over the next year. Um, we'll be doing our final report to NSF a year from this summer, and the more data we can gather, the better. So we'll probably be interviewing some of you guys, uh, whoever's willing, uh, probably at the end of next spring. And then we hope that you'll participate in using the SALG um, on your, in your uh, classes. So what is the SALG? Well, the SALG itself, if you're not aware, is an online um, evaluation form. And it's a lot more, I think, useful but certainly more um, directed uh, for course evaluation from student feedback at the end of the course. Um, basically, it's very easy to use. You can use it for any course you want, modify it however you like. You can add your own um, specific questions for um, whatever course you happen to be uh, using and teaching. It does ex focus exclusively on the degree in which um, students feel like what they learned the most from, what skills they gained, and that sort of thing. So it's pretty easy to use, and it's very customizable, which is great. Now, the SALG-M is the math version of the SALG, and it's available on the salgsite.org uh, web platform. You can set the beginning and end dates uh, for your students to take it, so, you know, the week before finals or whatever would work. Um, you can give your students a password so that only the students from that class can get in and um, reply to it. And basically it will let you either view the uh, formatted summary of responses on the website or you can download it as an Excel file, which is what I've been doing this last year to evaluate um, our test site's use of it. So the Salgam Sage is the one we specifically designed last year that asks a few SAGE open-ended questions and also adds a few multiple choice items specifically directed to SAGE. You're welcome to customize whatever you like. We ask you to leave the SAGE questions in if you can because it helps us get a whole bunch of data for particular questions. So um, to date we've had five test site instructors use it both in linear algebra and abstract algebra classes. We have 62 students' responses so far. We'd love to have like 10 times that. Um, and basically what I'd like, if any of you use this in the next year, if you could send me just a copy of your Excel file uh, after you used it, I will put them all together a year from now and we'll hopefully have a really good report for the NSF. Um, this is an example of some of the questions. So all of these first few are about how much did each of the following aspect of the class help you learn, okay? The ones that are highlighted in black here are the SAGE questions we a uh, added, the, or the SAGE aspects we added, uh, your instructor's use of SAGE for in-class demonstrations, your use of SAGE on your own for this class, and you see the, the answers are really pretty strong for a lot of them. Um, this is actually the question about the textbooks or the online documentation and how effective those were in uh, using SAGE in the classroom. And this one is specifically about availability of the answers um, to your being able to, you know, the questions you have using SAGE while you were doing the work. This one here uh, was all about learning to use SAGE as a tool that I can use in other classes or on my own. So we can get a really nice collection of answers there. I'm going to skip those. The open-ended questions are really interesting because these are the open-ended questions we've added in the SALGAM for SAGE. Um, the first one is, how would you compare doing work with SAGE to doing work another way? Um, very bipolar responses. They loved it or they hated it. <laughs> there are a few in the middle but pretty much it's what you've heard from the other folks who use SAGE in the classroom. Some students are just like, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, and others, I never want to see it again. 
Did you so, tell if that was a, a, soci a sociological thing, like one particular class would band together and decide they all loved it? It's or? pretty universal so far across the five classes we've looked at. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it seemed to vary most. I haven't disaggregated it for like their majors or something like that, but it does seem to be that the more computer-oriented, programming-oriented folks are the ones who are super enthusiastic, or the math majors who plan to use it in their next, you know, two years of courses. So it's uh, it's been pretty pretty much uh, divided along those lines. Um, let's see the. How does Matt Sage compare to MATLAB, Maple, Mathematica? Almost everybody has preferred Sage. Whether they liked it or not, they think Sage is easy to use. So that was really nice to see. Um, does it say white? <coughs> what's that? Does it say white? No, not really. There's, it's usually just, uh, well, one of them says, all I've ever used is Mathematica, so you know I don't like learning something new. You know, So there was a few of those. But a lot of them said, you know, yes, I picked it up easily once I worked through the homeworks where we had to use it, or something like that. Sometimes you get a little more context of why, but that's pretty much what we get. Um, how easy was it to learn SAGE? Again, we got the bipolar responses. Either, yes, this was great, it was better than Maple, yay! Um, or, no, I hate doing any kind of programming. Every kind of programming is hard, you know. So <laughs> it's kind of... The same two extremes. I'm hoping if we get more data, we can flesh out the whys a little bit better. Um, how important is it to you that Sage is free? Hugely important for everybody. Absolutely. Nice. Whether they liked it or hated it, they loved that it was free. Um, was there enough availability running Sage online using a PC to get your work done? Almost everybody said yes. And, 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 almost, and I don't think there was anybody who said this was a complete disaster. Every time I tried to do it, it broke. You know. This is for the test sites mm -hmm. where we have the, the dedicated Specific servers dedicated for them. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So that obviously big hit. And dedicated servers with enough RAM and stuff like that. Too. The same as the Sage and the same yeah. computers. Yeah. Yeah. No, as opposed to my local Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We also had a very dedicated JSON drop, too. Yep. Oh, very <laughs> dedicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I install one of those? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you how much it costs. Yeah, it's not open free. It's HG space clone. And then this last open ended question how do you intend to use Sage after or outside of this class? And this was the most interesting, and, um, especially when we get more responses. There was a wide variety of very specific ways they plan to use it in the future from, yeah, I'm going to, you know, redo all my past work for last year in this other class with it or whatever, you know, all the way down to, well, I might think about using it if my mathematical li uh, license expires, you know, kind of things, you know. If I have to, I will kind of things. But it was a lo nice variety, so we're looking forward to looking a little bit more deeply into that. So again, my email address is here. You can also send it to the Gmail address that's attached to the Google Groups. And I want to also just show you real quickly, on the um, agenda for today, we have two files uploaded um, and one link. So this takes you directly to the South website. It is very easy to um, register. Get, you get yourself a password. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. And also, this is our official invitation to all of you to please use it. Um, these are the step-by-step -step directions. In doing step-by-step -step directions and testing them on every web platform, we found out Internet Explorer does not behave well with some aspects of the South. Chrome, Safari, Firefox all work great. We're so, familiar with those issues. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's built in there. You do need to uh, do that. Yeah. Uh, is the gay family use uh, this family from Canada? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah we have users. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's where you'll find the links. And then I want to show you real quickly what the SALG website looks like. Um, when you get to it, you have um, a, your login is up there. And once you have logged in and got yourself an account, it'll show you, um, actually I'll just go ahead and show you how it'll look like once you've set up some surveys. You have them all sorted at the bottom of your home page. So these are all the ones that I've set up. They all appear down at the bottom. You can reuse them, you can adapt them, you can modify them. 
Um, or you can just use the our basic Salgam Master is what we teach you in the directions of how to go and fetch. So, and then if you actually pick one of them, if I go to the master, you can preview it and see what it's going to look like for the students. And this is what it looks like. It is just quick bubble fill in except for the few open-ended questions. So it's pretty easy for the students to go down and do. Um, and it's fairly long, but it's not ridiculous. I'd say it's probably about twice, three times as long as the usual uh, feedback form the evaluation students already do. So anyway, so I hope you all participate. Um, I'll be sending out reminders to the, um, the various email lists uh, later in the fall to remind you, please set it up and use it with your classes. I'll do it again in the spring. We'll also probably try to set up some phone interviews with y'all. Yeah, Is doing the pre-post version really important to you? No. No. Okay. The, the, the question is, you can actually use this as a pre-post. If you want to get formative evaluation throughout <coughs> the course, right now the survey is pretty much set out as just a course end evaluation because yeah. it asks questions like, how well did this work through the course? But you could definitely customize it if you really wanted to take the time to do a pre and post. We do not need pre and post. Okay. What I'm concerned with is mainly just post. This, just think of it as an adjunct to the one the university or your college makes you do. Um, this is, this is going to give you a little more feedback specifically on things you care about in teaching your math course. You don't have to add questions just about SAGE. You can add questions about anything you want. Um, so it's very customizable and very easy to use. And as I say, if you send me the Excel data, I'm probably just not even going to pay attention to stuff you add except if it has to do with SAGE. So I'm looking forward to having a lot of data points to summarize and show, uh, show the NSF next year. So and if you have any questions or any problems come up, let, us, let me know. Sandra knows the folks that did the cell game real well, and she can get things fixed very quickly. Do you have any strategies for convincing students to fill these things out? Like <laughs> at our institution, we can't even get them to fill out student values. Tom, yes, there are I, I Tom would you like to address? For all my math classes this year, I get a much higher response rate than I do with the departments or a university survey that just has Am I dismissing my class on time? You know, do I pay and things like that? <laughs> and what I told them is, if you fill this out, okay, I will drop your lowest homework score. Okay, which is, is a very small percentage of their grade. They do it, almost all of them do it, so I get probably an 80 to 90% response rate. And there's a method of setting it up in there so you can send directly to your students and you know exactly who's filled it out. Okay, you can't associate <coughs> names with surveys, but yeah, and it works really well, and I've gotten very, very good response rates, and it gives me a lot of information. Yeah, I do this sim something similar. Instead, it's um, on the final exam, the last question is, <coughs> and fill out the SOLG survey, and it's worth some really infinitesimal part of their final exam grade that doesn't, it's not going to make any difference, but because it's on the final exam, they'll <laughs> do it. Right, right after class, yeah. So what I do is uh, there's uh, 20 minutes in the middle of one of our 55-minute classes uh, where I leave the room and have them do it. Mm -hmm. And that if I do it at the beginning or at the end, it can go wrong. But if it's in the middle, it's kind of awkward. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. And by the way, if any of you have used a cell in the past and you have data where you use Sage in the classroom and you have files lying around, please send them to me. I don't care if they're from two years ago. You know, that'd be great. Yeah. Just to mention I've had pretty good success appealing to their sense of intrinsic motivation, explaining the purpose for this mm -hmm. and how they can benefit the globe if they do a good job at it. And that's going to get very good response. That's a great oh, idea. Preying on their ideals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, my question actually wasn't about getting them to do it, although the way we're going to soon get them to do it is I don't think our, their grades will be released until they... <laughs> but that's not what the sound, that's just our typical student evaluation. You want to graduate? That's right. Um, so I don't know if sound would work that way, but I, I, the question I had for you was um, about using this in general. I mean, are you saying that this is a, an instrument that one could use in any class? Yes. Or because we have this embedded assessment business mm -hmm. that are, we're trying to be proactive about so that the feds don't proactive for us and um, so I mean is this this is an instrument that you we could use in completely non-sage related context yeah definitely. That would be 
relevant. Definitely. And the one thing you want to be careful of as far as IRB issues go is you don't want to have it set up so that it's a severe impact on your students if they don't do it. So that's right. the only IRB issue as far as, you know, you can't make the reward or the punishment too extreme. You know, it has to be just a little bit of, of motivation. Um, yeah, Tom? Yeah, we have a, a couple of grants at SFA to do uh, one's an MSP grant, the other's a noise grant to train teacher leaders. Mm -hmm. So these are in -ser uh, service teachers who are highly qualified. We're trying to make them so they can give professional development. I used to solve with them, I just modified the questions. Uh, and there's a few things that I couldn't change, like, did you like this class? I'd say, well, did you like strike class, put workshop, and just do it like you think you would. Right. And I've gotten some great results from them and great data that I couldn't have gotten otherwise. It's mm -hmm. good to hear. Rob? Uh, Susan's slides are now properly linked into the wiki. OK, yeah. and that's the earlier version of the slides, but that's okay. fine. Right, well, it doesn't have my email it. address in it, but you can find that other and, and speaking of intrinsic <laughs> motivation, Susan's work has been very helpful to our grant and very helpful to SAGE. So if you think the only way you can contribute to SAGE is to write code, that's not true. Run this out, send her the spreadsheet, and that will. Yeah, and we can, we can use the evaluation data, whether it's the SALG evaluation data or the surveys we make you fill out at these workshops. We can use all of that in writing for future grants to get more funding. So, you know, there actually is a purpose in the long run um, for this. So, um, and as they mentioned, we're also starting to look at the Google Analytics for the widespread use of, of the various servers. So that's also part of our evaluation. Yeah. Yeah, for smaller classes, like up to maybe 20, mm -hmm. um, you could, because um, you want a, a, maybe a verbal follow-up on this as well, so the people who submit the online form get an invitation to a pizza party that you run to That's a on. nice incentive, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no impact on the grade. <laughs> food is good, food is good. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Great. So talking about that, uh, we're free for the rest of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, let's